for a big time matchup between a couple of top 20 teams. Number five, Louisville, taking on number 20, DePaul. As we welcome you inside Bubbleville, Ryan Rucco, socially distanced from my partner, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We are so happy to be with you this evening for what should be an outstanding matchup and on a day where we honor much more than just basketball. Every college basketball season, we honor the legacy of Jim Valvano. And we ask you to also do so. No donation is too small. All money tonight and all money you ever donate to the V Foundation goes directly into cancer research. We'll have much more on that throughout the evening. But Rebecca, this should be an absolutely incredible game. We have two really high-powered offenses, teams that get up and down the floor as well. Yeah, I'm excited to see what these teams can do on the offensive end of the floor. And you start with Louisville with a terrific backcourt. And that is Dana Evans, their senior, the reigning ACC Player of the Year, leading the team in scoring. And alongside her is the super freshman, Haley Van Lith, the 5'7 guard. Second on the team in scoring and leading the team in rebounding. This is a squad who can defend but really score as well. Meanwhile, for DePaul, this is a team that's gone to 17 straight NCAA tournaments and they have plenty of firepower themselves. DePaul right now leading the nation in scoring at just under 110 points a game. All players on the floor for DePaul at all times have the green light to shoot the three ball. They will get up and down, full court press the entire game. One of the more exciting teams to watch in the country. Doug Bruno, the longtime head coach of the DePaul Blue Demons. It is 35th season at the helm. You see Sonia Morris, their star scorer. A lot of talent, especially in the backcourt, on the floor in this game. DePaul, one and one thus far, had a very tight defeat to Texas A&M, ranked 13th at the time, 93-91. And then on a 128-point performance in a win against Chicago State. Louisville controls the opening possession, and Dana Evans in for an easy two. And you will see man-to-man -man defense from DePaul. They will pick up full court. They'll get out in you that time. Dana Evans is able to take it to the rim. Lexi Helm fouled on the drive, and she will shoot two. Take a look at the DePaul starting five. Sonia Morris, Deba Kelger, who's really played well through the first two games of this season. Lexi Held, Deja Church, and then Maya Stovall making her second start. DePaul still waiting on clearance from Jory Allen, who would likely be the big who would join their starting lineup, but instead they end up starting five guards, Rebecca. Yeah, this is an undersized lineup, but they play to their strengths, and that is picking up, you see it here, full court pressure the entire game. They will extend their man-to-man -man defense as well. See the Louisville starting lineup with Evans and Van Lith in the backcourt. Cochran, Balligan, and Smith as the rebound tilts into the arms of DePaul. Hell trying to fling it up the floor. It's a kickball loose and finally snared by DePaul. That's going to be a travel before the shot as Deja Church is called for the violation. Jeff Walls in his 14th season as Louisville head coach. This is a team that has got 96 and 11 over the last three seasons. And a foul in the backcourt called against Morris as DePaul was applying that trademark pressure. And DePaul needs to be aggressive. That's what they do on the defensive end of the floor, but they've been fouling early this season. They need to play clean defense, not put their opponents on the free throw line. Alana Smith all the way in for the bucket plus the foul. Speaking of putting their opponents on the free throw line. Great job, just with the inbound pass. Passing it over the pressure, you get in a two-on-one situation. And the finish inside, just an athletic. That's a, that's a tough move when you know the defender's right there and you're not gonna land cleanly. Lexi Held hit with her first personal. You see Alana Smith's career free throw numbers. Smith, a transfer from Gulf Coast State. And Jeff Walls told us one of the reasons he feels like Smith is going to integrate so quickly and nicely with his squad is she did spend a year at UCLA before going to Gulf Coast State. 
coached very well there as the layup won't go. And so it feels like she has a, a good idea of what a big program runs like, and it's an easier adjustment for her. As the rebound is put back home by Olivia Cochran, another very talented freshman for Louisville. They're off to a 7-1 start. Held the quick trigger too strong on the three. Rebound fought for, won by Morris. Her putback will go. And that's what you have to understand with DePaul on the offensive end of the floor is they will look for the first good shot and they will take quick threes and spread you out and try to drive inside as well. Shoot it or share it. Yes. That's the <laughs> Doug Bruno philosophy. Van Litz jumper is good. And this is the pace that we expect to see the entire game. Both teams want to move it quickly. DePaul playing with the fastest pace or second fastest pace in the country right now. Stowell cannot finish. Rejected by Van Lith. Down court. Cochran is fouled. And the foul is going to go against Deja Church. Only four teams in the nation have longer streaks of making NCAA tournaments than Doug Bruno's DePaul Blue Demons. 17 straight seasons, and it would have been an 18th last year had there been an NCAA tournament. Of course, Notre Dame would have been bumped off the list had there been an NCAA tournament. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Louisville, and it's DePaul basketball. Now, one thing we see differently, Rebecca, and a foul on the reach there from Smith, from DePaul, is they had played their first two games wearing masks. Now, a lot of teams are practicing with masks. It helps with the contact tracing and also just a little additive measure. But DePaul, one of the very few who's actually wearing them in games, but they have shed that today. Yeah, when you talk to Doug Bruno about it, the first thing he always says when it comes to the masks is, I listen to my doctors, I listen to the scientists, and they had felt that that was the best way to keep their team safe. But it is, it's interesting watching because every team is practicing with them. When they're in the weight room, they're wearing masks. When they're doing conditioning, they're wearing masks. Pretty much the only time they're not is during the 40 minutes of competition. You wonder, okay, could that be something that helps you conditioning-wise when you're doing all that mass? Now, Alana Smith is going to check out after her second foul. Kiana Smith into the game for Louisville, her first game of the season. Casa Robinson in as well. Here's a three from Church off the mark. Nice box out underneath from Dana Evans springing the break. Cochran, the freshman, will finish deftly on the move. I've been so impressed with Cochran early in this season. She can run the floor, as you see there. She has great hands, nice moves on the low block. She has a bright future in front of her. Look at her there, contesting out on the perimeter, the quick box out and then run. That's the advantage you have as a defender when you contest a long shooter is that you can run down the floor. You don't often see bigs do it. She can do it really well. Darion Rogers going to shoot two. Freshman out of Roselle, Illinois. Two-time All-State guard and a five-star prospect. Doug Bruno feels very good about coming off his bench as Rodgers hits both. It's an 11-5 lead early for Louisville as Sonia Morris was being tended to by the DePaul training staff for just a moment. That was pretty quick. Yeah, that was. I love it when you acknowledge how efficient the training staffs are. You know? I mean, they're trying to sneak it in on a free throw. Yeah. They don't want their player to come out of the game. Stop this little cut from bleeding and let me get back out there. The unsung heroes, they get noticed by Rebecca Lobo. <laughs> They're not unsung anymore. No, -uh. They are the primary heroes. That's going to be a three-second violation against Louisville as they turn it over. To be expected, too, with turnovers and fouls in the early going. Obviously, everybody's still feeling their way early in the season. And after in a regular camp in preseason compared to what teams are used to. Held able to dip inside, nicely found her way around Evans for two. And two, Ryan, you know, you might not have your full complement of players every day at practice. 
Doug Bruno was talking about that. You just have to practice whether you have six, eight, ten, whatever it is. But Keldra gets denied by Dixon. How about the fire from Rogers from way out? She can't finish. Good battle there from Bekeldra, but Elizabeth Dixon will win the possession for Louisville as it last hit D. Bekeldra. I wonder if Louisville will try to get Dixon a touch inside because they, DePaul simply doesn't have anybody who can match up with her in terms of her size. Van Litt dumping it underneath to Dixon. How about Van Litt from three? No. And the rebound squirms out of bounds off of Dixon. It's DePaul basketball. Well, Haley Van Litt, one of the top freshmen in the country, depending on what publication you look at, could be number two recruit, number seven, wherever she is, she is amongst the highest and has really impressed early on amongst those around Louisville. Rogers has been very impressive herself in her early minutes here, now a two-point game. But Van Litt, certainly one of those freshmen everybody's looking forward to watching at this level. Yeah, she sure hasn't disappointed. She's been really efficient. She shot the ball well. It rebounded extremely well. For a small guard, she can get in there and mix it up. If she's averaged nine and a half boards through her first two games and mixes it up there with the rejection. How about the handle and then the bullet? But it could not be grabbed by Kiana Smith as Louisville turns it over. The guards love this. 5-7, if you can get in there, I mean, this is good, solid defense. Morris is a tough player to handle one-on-one. -on -one. Really nice job by Van Liff. Van Liff named the ACC Freshman of the Week. First Louisville player to earn that honor since Asia Durr back in February of 2016. And DePaul turns it over. This is similar to what we saw in the game last night between South Carolina and NC State. And not only a lot of turnovers, but a lot of dead ball turnovers, travels. That three will go. Kiana Smith connecting from downtown. The transfer from Cal, playing in her first game of the season. Sonia Morris, nasty crossover, couldn't finish, and then a foul against Louisville underneath. We'll step aside. The Jimmy V Women's Classic. Part by Paycom, comprehensive HR and payroll technology. Air Force Reserve, explore your opportunities with the Air Force Reserve and Hotels.com. Keep your travels flexible with free cancellation on most hotels. Well, we know this is the Jimmy V Women's Classic, and Jeff Wall's family has certainly been touched by cancer. His nephew, Brady Walls, back in 2014, began his battle against leukemia. Jeff saying that cancer was going to lose this fight, and cancer did. Brady, after three years of treatment, recently admitted to the survivor's clinic, which means he is considered cured. And he is a student manager for his uncle, the son of Brian Walls, has aspirations of coaching and is just doing so well. And one of those beautiful stories you see, thanks to the resources that are put in to cancer research, which you can contribute to tonight by going to v.org slash donate. No amount is too small. And remember, every dollar you donate tonight goes directly towards cancer research. Who do you think talks more trash during practice, Jeff Walls or Brady Walls? He's, oh. he's one of their practice players as well. <laughs> I would have to say Brady as <laughs> Kiana Smith banks it in. It was interesting. Brady said that he's usually the worst player on the floor. And his uncle likes to remind him of that constantly. <laughs> <laughs> but Kelger can't finish. Held puts it in. Now, Rebecca, last night we saw Cordy Lyle as well as Carolyn Peck. They ended up donating $50 each for every three made in their game towards cancer research to the Jimmy V Foundation. So what do you think? I mean, I think we need to do the same thing tonight, right? I think without question, yeah. It's higher, like, risk-reward for us, too, because both of these teams can really shoot the three. Because there was six total threes made last night, 
Morris picks up her second foul, so that's two early fouls on Sonia Morris, a key contributor for DePaul. And DePaul, they may have fared differently against Texas A&M had it not been for Morris fouling out with seven minutes left in that game. Or did they change that foul? They did, okay. They changed the foul to Rogers, so Morris will stay on the floor with just one. An 18-12 Louisville lead as Van Liff hits both. Now the steal all the way in for the lay. It won't go from Robinson. Follows it up in Louisville, another chance here. And that's what Mikasa Robinson brings to the floor. She's always going to bring energy and step things up on the defensive end, getting them an extra possession. Mikasa Robinson, the junior, who can really, really defend. Here's Van Lift. You've already seen the nice handle from Haley Van Lift. The layup drops in. How about Kiana Smith? How effective she's been thus far. Seven points in her first game of the year. Yeah, you can see why Jeff Walls is so excited about Kiana Smith. And Lexi Hell bodying her way inside. Yeah, she's done a nice job of getting inside, whether it's off the drive. We saw it on an offensive rebound as well. Held with seven points. And a foul here against DePaul. Hey, it's a top 20 triple header college basketball Sunday on ESPN. Number 12, Villanova, and number 17, Texas. Tip off the day at noon. Up next, it'll be the Crosstown Shootout as Xavier travels three short miles to Cincinnati. And we wrap up at five as 20th ranked Kentucky takes on Georgia Tech in Atlanta. All three games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. We were talking to Doug Bruno yesterday and uh, we were asking him about how he felt about his team and he immediately started talking about the things he was worried about. <laughs> and he said, we got to take care of the backboard issue and we have to take care of the free throw issue. And I think he has to feel right now like they've got to stop putting Louisville at the free throw line. Louisville five of five from the line thus far. Morris, what a hesitation move. Frees up Rodgers underneath for the lay and the foul. I've really enjoyed watching Sonya Morris play. I mean, she can shoot the three. She's got a great pull up and you see the little hezzy. She comes off the on ball screen to her left. You get the defender to stand straight up and you can go by and then delivers it as well. You were asking her how, how she improved her game over the over yeah. the summer, and she said, you know, coach told me that, you know, everybody knows to force me right. Well, <laughs> even if you know to force her right, sometimes a really good player can still go their preferred way, and she did that time. Likes getting to that pull-up game as well when she goes left. Morris, all Big East second team a season ago and was the Big East most improved player. Preseason all Big East this year. As Church might have gotten a hand on that, and now a foul in the backcourt against Louisville. Balligan gets called. Balagoon gets called for the foul, and you see, for DePaul, no points yet from beyond the three-point line, which. Um, that's not the way they usually score, Rebecca. Yeah, they're coming off a game where they were 19 of 30 from the three-point line in their last game against Chicago State. Both teams in the bonus now. So Morris goes to the line to shoot two. And misses the first. An 85% free throw shooter a season ago. All six DePaul field goals in this opening quarter have come in the paint. And, and that's a product of their three-point shooting. You have to extend out to all of their shooters. That's going to create space for you to drive in the lane or even at times to get offensive boards. Oh, how about Morris? The steal and the layup. Stovall applied the pressure, and Morris came up with a steal. And this is what DePaul does. They will guard you 94 feet all game long. A three-point Louisville lead. Oh, Smith step back, rolls in, Kiana Smith. How quick was that step back move and release ride? Kiana Smith having a big first quarter, nine points, four of six shooting. They're going to get out and, and just extend. And Sonia Morris does a great job, active hands and finishing there, and then a quick step back going to her right. 
gets the ball in her shooter's pocket. She's been impressive in her first action here in a Louisville uniform. Well, we know why Jeff Walls is so excited about Kiana Smith. Transfer from Cal, sat out last year, missed the first two games of this season, so playing her first game with the Cardinals. Helped lead Cal to two NCAA tournaments while she was there. Balagoon can't lay it in. Rebound poked up in the air, collected by Robinson for Louisville. How about a straight on three? Evans can't hit. Another offensive rebound for Louisville. Cochran controls, finds the cutter, it's Evans. She banks it home. Really good decision by Dana Evans to see that her big had the ball and was surrounded and cut to the basket. Oh, McKelja got free for the easy two. Here's that pressure from DePaul. Another three won't go from Smith, and McKelja able to snare the rebound. Stovall out there with Rogers. Rogers, nifty handle and the footwork. That's where Rogers has the advantage. She's going up against a bigger, stronger player. Well, that's okay. Pull her out to the perimeter and make her defend out there. Another look from Smith. <laughs> 11 first quarter points for Smith. And how about the pace of this game, Rebecca Lobo? Both of these teams want to push the ball down the floor. When they collect on the defensive end, they're looking to throw it long. And again, just the catch. She's just in her shooter's pocket quickly and able to finish. And a well-earned rest for Kiana Smith, who scores 11 points in her first quarter on the floor for Louisville. Right now, Doug Bruno has to feel pretty good about his team. They're down four to the number five team in the country, and they haven't made a three yet. Hey, this is a DePaul team that when they get hot, they can score just in bunches from the three-point line. They've been top two each of the last three seasons in three-pointers made. Another steal. Held comes up with it. She will pop. Can't connect. Rebound Van Lift a minute to go here in the first. Four-point Louisville lead. Again, more pressure. That last hit, Cochran, and DePaul forces yet another turnover. Now Jeff Wall's telling his team, hey, we don't want to push it if you're going to turn it over. Yeah, and, and I understand Cochran was wide open. Uh, but just for the... For Van Lift to be able to make that pass three-quarter court, it was going to have to be perfect. Five turnovers now for Louisville. DePaul plays at a breakneck pace. First in Division I thus far. McKelja can't hit the three on a two-for-one opportunity. Here comes Evans, who can blaze up the floor. Evans traveled. And that is the sixth turnover for Louisville. That's what happens sometimes, right? When you're just trying to play with pace and you're trying to get out quickly, body can get moving a little bit faster than you want it to. Hill looks off the three, sleekly inside. Nine to shoot, but Kelja rummaging gets denied. Emphatic rejection from Marissa Russell. DePaul moves so quickly on the offensive end. Defensively, you're working hard on this possession, but you're giving up some size, so some block shots might be the result. Russell, 5'11 freshman out of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And makes DePaul can make you work on defense. Held for three, too strong. Van Lith the rebound, five seconds to push. Van Lith flicks it ahead. Evans beats the buzzer with the layup. Dana Evans puts it home, and Louisville a six-point lead after one. You've got one of the best guards in the country getting it done on both ends. We see you, Dana Evans. Foundation's fight against cancer has not stopped. If you are able to, please support cancer research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give 
goes to cancer research. You can even play along with Rebecca and I who are going to be making a donation for every three made in this game. No amount is too small. And you just heard from our colleague and one of our best friends on the planet, Holly Rowe, and the way her life has been impacted by cancer research. And Holly will be a part of this team moving forward this season. She's not with us here tonight, but she is on the phone joining us right now. And Holly, obviously, this is a, a, a week that always means so much to all of us at ESPN and, and so many people who are touched by cancer. And I know means so much to you personally. It is. I, I know that, you know, the V Foundation came out of Jimmy Valvano's fight and his speech, but what I love is how they have continued to grow and save people's lives. Um, their research funded my doctor who came up with cutting edge clinical trials that have helped save my life. And I know a lot of people in our women's basketball family who have been touched by cancer. And I just hope that everybody watching tonight, big or small, no matter what you could donate would consider donating and, and helping others who are impacted by this horrific disease. Well, Holly, uh, if you were here with us now, you know we'd be putting you uh, to work constantly on the stories of Louisville and DePaul. And we are going to put you to work on some national stories around the women's college basketball landscape as soon as we come back. So don't go anywhere. Smith, man, she's really good. Really good. Really good. Dallas, Atlanta, Indiana, all vying for that top pick. We find out from LaChina at the half who ends up with it. That is our Jeep halftime report. Rebecca Lobo, Ryan Rucco with you in Bubbleville in Uncasville, Connecticut. Holly Rowe joining us via the wonders of technology. And Holly, we we're about to put you to work on some of the bigger storylines just overarching this college basketball season. A lot happening in Stanford right now, Holly, both uh, when it comes to relocating as well as record chasing. That's right. If you haven't heard Stanford due to health concerns in that area, have had to pick up and move their basketball team, much like they did with their football team earlier this week. Tara Vanderveer has returned them to Las Vegas, where they've picked up a game against UNLV. I can't wait to see. She's three wins away from tying Pat Summit's career win record of 1,098. So we will be on record watch for Tara Vanderveer. And I'm excited to see them play this year. They have a Helly Jones back who's healthy after that knee injury last year. The whole twins are a big piece of that and the veteran leadership of Keanu Williams. So I'm really excited to see this year's version of the Stanford ladies. And then, hey, how about South Carolina going down? Number one team in the country, shooting just 27% in their game. I listened into a couple of Zoom calls after that game and Aaliyah Boston saying, like, look, we just have to be better. We'll, we'll do better. We'll shoot better from the outside and get back to work. Um, but how about Kayla Jones from NC State? Hit the three to win that game. 16 points, 12 rebounds. And then one last little storyline. Got my eye on Oregon tonight. Niara Sabali, the sister of Sachi Sabali, is going off. She's nine for nine right now. 18 points, nine rebounds in a game against Colorado. Let's see if Oregon can reload for Kelly Graves this season. Well, Ryan, one thing we know is that if our audio goes out, Holly can just do play-by-play -play of this game. <laughs> That's right. Holly, you've had to take on every role already early in this college basketball season. I'm not sure I can keep up with the pace of this game. I love this pace, and I love what good scorers and shooters these women are. I think shooting is a lost art from the early games I saw in men's basketball, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, these women are shooting the heck out of the rock. It's really fun to see. Well, Holly, we so appreciate you, and we can't wait to see you. And uh, we know how much the V Foundation means to you, and obviously we will continue to echo that message to the audience tonight. And we will see you soon, partner. You stay safe and well. And welcome to College Basketball for Women, Ryan. We cannot wait to have you be a member of our team. And uh, me, Ryan, Rebecca, will be doing the Women's Final Four, and we just can't wait to have you. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Holly. I'm so honored to be a part of it. So excited to get to work with you and Rebecca now year-round, WNBA and college. And uh, very, very 
excited about this new opportunity and, and getting to see the full scope of these young women's journeys. Now they're just reviewing right now who that foul was on, because if it's on held, it would be her third foul. And it could be on Rodgers or it could be on held. Dana Evans continues to do a really good job of getting into the paint. There wasn't a whole lot of contact there from either one of them, but they do give the foul to Held. That's big for, for DePaul. She is such an important piece for them, especially from the three. Lexi Held, the Big East Tournament most outstanding player last season. Hey, tomorrow at noon on ABC and the ESPN app, Justin Fields and number four Ohio State head to East Lansing to take on a Michigan State squad coming off a big upset of previously unbeaten Northwestern. The Buckeyes have their sights set on playing in their fourth straight Big Ten championship game with two more wins. That's tomorrow at noon on ABC and the ESPN app. The Louisville has opened up a 14-point lead here now at the beginning of the second quarter. And Lexi held a key piece to the DePaul attack on the bench with three fouls. More on the shoulders of that young woman, Sonya Morris. Given some space, why not? Can't connect. Rogers saves, and Church able to finish. Nice save from Rogers. I think Louisville has, has done a really solid job on the defensive end of the floor, not letting DePaul get very comfortable. Van Litt, smooth stroke from the corner. And I love the pace that Louisville's playing with. You know, you expect it from DePaul. You expect them to come down and kick, take quick shots. Louisville is looking to push and run at every turn, taking open threes when they're there, getting into the paint as well. They started the quarter getting the ball into Dixon and taking advantage of their size inside. Rogers, nice distribution, but it's erased by Balagoon. Recovering quickly. Eighth in the ACC in blocks a season ago. And already has shown that athleticism today. How about four blocks in this first half for Elizabeth Balagoon? Yeah, she's got great length, and it comes through on the defensive end of the floor. Mikasa Robinson checks in. Narika Kono out there as well for Louisville with Dana Evans, Haley Van Lith, and Balagoon. Those are the five on the floor for the Cardinals, and that's going to be a travel against DePaul as Church gets hit with her third travel of this first half. DePaul always among the best in the nation when it comes to assist to turnover ratio. They have been top five in the country for the past five seasons in that category as Van Lith has a chance for three. The floater goes and a free throw coming. A 17-2 Louisville run. Van Lith is just so strong and gets inside, absorbs a little bit and finishes as well. And DePaul has, and Louisville has been terrific from the free throw line so far, seven for seven. Rodgers will check out, Danninger in. Haley Van Lith playing in just her third collegiate game. 11 points thus far in this first half. Another offensive rebound for Louisville. They had rebounded 54% of their misses through their first two games, and that's going to be an offensive foul against Dana Evans, her second personal. You see the balance in the scoring from Smith, Van Lith, and Evans. And Rebecca, I mean, that is a ridiculously talented trio of guards that Jeff Walls has at his disposal. Yeah, I was talking to Jeff Walls about a week ago, and he said, just wait until Smith gets healthy and can get on the floor. He said, I will put my backcourt up against anybody else in the country. And you can see why here today. Louisville ranked fifth currently in the nation. Church looking for space, couldn't find it. Good D inside from Kiana Smith. Balagoon can't fingertip at home, and then Sonia Morris is crushed and fouled. Now, how about this, Rebecca? DePaul yet to hit a three. They are 0 of 8 thus far. They're coming off a game 
albeit against Chicago State, but in which they went 19 of 30 from three-point range. Yeah, they haven't had many open looks today. Louisville's done a really good job of extending their defense, using their length, not giving DePaul open looks from the perimeter. Nanya Morris, step back three, won't go. Good box out by Robinson for Louisville, triggering the break. Kono will take, can't hit. Weak side board, Church, her fling ahead. But Kelja finds Daninger, the rejection from Kono, and it's gonna stay right here. Anytime a DePaul player catches the ball in the paint, their first thought has to be pump fake. They are giving up so much size in this game to Louisville. When you catch pump fake, the player will go by, and then you can put it up on the rim. Well, to your point, Rebecca, that is the eighth block of the half <laughs> from Louisville. Morris is going to make it block number nine for Louisville. The kick out won't matter as the offensive fouls called against Alana Smith. You know, something to keep in mind as we see all the rejections, and we mentioned it earlier, Rebecca, but it is worth repeating. Jory Allen is likely going to be the primary big for Doug Bruno's four-guard lineup. She is here, as you see, but has still not been clear. The Indiana transfer waiting to hear on her requested transfer waiver. Surprised she hasn't been cleared because it seems like a lot of players every day are getting the news that they have been cleared for this season. Kono stops from 12, pulled the string. Here's Bakelja pushing pace. Morris, a deep three, won't go. Church the rebound, can't force it in. Another chance, and that one does pop home for D. Bakelja. Dee Bakelja has a nose for the basketball, and as she catches it around the rim, she can get it up there and score. She continues to work hard on the offensive glass. Doug Bruno talked about her just being an instinctive offensive player. It's not this obvious refined skill when you're watching her as Concord hits the jumper. It's that she just she knows how to score and has a knack for it. And averaging 19 and a half points through the first two games of this season for DePaul, a player is looking to take a really big leap this year. That's a very deep three. Too strong from Church and DePaul still awaiting their first three of the game. This was a 30 to 24 Louisville lead after one quarter of play. But that six point lead has become a 17 point lead here in this second quarter for the number five ranked team in the nation. Ryan, yesterday on Twitter, DePaul head coach Doug Bruno said he too would make a donation for every three that was made in the game today and also for every assist. And then Jeff Walls responded joking around today saying, I'll make a donation for every DePaul missed three. <laughs> well, Right now, he's making a big donation as that three drops for Kiana Smith. 14 points now for Smith, her second three of the game, and DePaul turns it over as Smith getting it done on both ends. Uh, Louisville's good. Louisville's good, and it's tough early in the season with all the scheduling problems that people have had and, and the competition that they've played. Louisville has a chance to be really good. They've got it. Guards that can fill it up as you see Van Lith hitting another three. They've got size inside defensively. They're active. They like to push the pace. They're going to be a really fun team to continue to watch this year. That's going to be an offensive foul against Caudill as DePaul turns it over. Kiana Smith has been so impressive here today. She's gotten inside. She's hit from deep. Van Lith on the other side of the floor, just fake it left, Robinson passes to her. The lefty gets it off quickly. Wow, to have both of these players on each side of the floor, and then when they're on the floor with Dana Evans, three guards who can really fill it up. Van Lith, one of the top freshmen in the nation. This is another talented freshman in Concord, couldn't finish that time. How about Kono, the hands from the ground, then finds Van Lith for the finish. And that's the other thing with Louisville, is they have depth. They can continue to play this kind of fast pace because Jeff Walls can rotate players in. That pass tilts out of bounds, last hit Danninger. DePaul turns it over. And DePaul will take a timeout. Louisville 
doing a little bit of everything, getting scrappy when they need to. And how about Van Lith, the freshman, with 16 points in his first half? DePaul has missed nine of their last 10. Rebecca, what have you seen during this second quarter thus far? I mean, Louisville's continued to be really active. They've been impressive the whole first half on both ends of the floor. What, what has struck me is when they get the ball on a defensive board is how quickly they push it the other way. And how about Kiana Smith and her debut in a Louisville uniform? She has come out with great poise. You saw her hit three. She's been able to take it inside as well. I mean, going one-on-one, -on -one, the guards that Louisville has put on the floor today, so impressive. They've gotten great production from their bench as well. 20 bench points for Louisville so far. Yeah, you look at, I mean, 30 points between Smith and Van Lift, and that's before you even factor in the reigning ACC Player of the Year in Dana Evans, who is likely going to be a top five pick in the WNBA draft. Which, speaking of, as Kono lays it in, we will have the WNBA draft lottery on our Jeep halftime report with LaChina Robinson. So make sure you stay tuned for that. New York Liberty has the best odds at the number one pick for the second year in a row. Of course, we did not get to see much of Sabrina Ionescu this past season due to injury, but the Liberty stocking up some young prime talent. All right, Van Lift should have made the pass. She faked the pass to Smith and then took it herself. <laughs> she should have made that pass. Well, Van Lift and Ooh. Smith have matched DePaul's scoring so far in this first half. 12 of 18 from the floor. DePaul 12 of 42 as a team. DePaul was able to pull off a lot of moving parts to get here to replace UConn for this game. Incredible effort by Doug Bruno and his staff. Jeff Walls with such immense respect for Coach Bruno and appreciation for him finding a way to get here to make this a big time matchup. As Smith just a filthy pull up through the legs and in 16 for Tiana Smith. Good finish on the other end by Stobel. Van Lift. Kono has played big minutes off the bench, and that's going to be a foul against her. Had already lost the handle, but is called for the foul. Well, here was the tweet from Jeff Walls on November 24th. Team needed round two. Anyone interested in playing at the Mohegan Sun on December 4th versus Louisville on ESPN, DM or call me and let's make it happen ASAP. Who says good things don't happen on Twitter? Right. <laughs> in the DMs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I think for some people, a lot of good things happen in the DMs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like youth basketball. You lose an opponent and you're on the phone or sending out emails. We need somebody. That's Come right. play. Morris, her three, no. Rebound snatched by Cochran, who is then fouled. And that is going to be the second foul on Sonia Morris. Coaches in the ACC have to be thinking after just watching this first half, like, really? We, we knew Louisville was going to be good, and we knew their backcourt was going to be tough, but Kiana Smith is making this team look like they can reach another level. Well, we were talking to Jeff Walls about Kiana Smith. He mentioned how excited he was about her. He also pointed out just what a smart player she is. You know, how easy it's been to integrate her because she's so wise. Her father, the head coach of Cal Poly, her uncle, Steve Smith, longtime assistant who we see in the WNBA. I'm sure he's going to be watching. Well, I'm sure he's watching this, but also at half mm -hmm. to see uh, the Indiana Fever where they land in the draft lottery. A 61-32 Louisville lead. Coming on a minute remaining in this second quarter. Rodgers, step back three. Uh-uh. DePaul still seeking its first three of the half, and there it is, Deep and Kelja. Finally connects from downtown for DePaul. They had been 0 of 14. 
which is just very rare you see that for this DePaul team who can be lights out from downtown. And that's been a staple of Doug Bruno's program forever. Yeah, we mentioned their last game, they were 19 of 30. Think back to some of their great shooters. Ali Quigley, who we see an all-star in the WNBA. My colleague, Zara Kustak. Asia Church can't get it to roll home. And Jeff Wall's going to take a timeout here with 23.9 seconds remaining. Draw something up for this final possession. Rebecca, I'm just going to ask you this. With Louisville, we know, look, they're fifth in the nation. How much did you already think of them as a real championship contender this season? And it's a half of basketball. We understand that. But how much does this half also influence your thoughts in that regard? I think a fair amount. You know, it's... <laughs> They're able to score, and I've been impressed with how they've done on the defensive end as well. We expected DePaul to come in and push, and we know Louisville likes to push, but they've been able to get in the paint in transition. They're hitting from the three-point line in transition. They got 61 points. I mean, we, we it's going to be a high-scoring game, yeah. a high-scoring half because of the pace that, that these teams play, but certainly they're in the discussion of the top teams in the country right now. Dan Lift, 16 points, 7 of 10 shooting in this first half. The ACC Freshman of the Week. Wide open underneath, Robinson waits, gets stripped. A chance for DePaul here. And a foul on Robinson as she reached in. DePaul in the bonus, so not the wisest foul there from Robinson. And I'm sure that's what Jeff Walls is articulating as Rogers will shoot too. Well, he took the timeout because he wanted to see how his team could do in a certain situation. You know, they're around 23 seconds. All right, this is exactly what I want us to run. Can we translate what I'm talking about in a timeout to the floor? And they didn't do that on the offensive end. You certainly don't then want to compound the mistake with a foul. Rodgers with nine points in this first half for DePaul. Deepa Kelja, their leading scorer with 10. Now, an important thing to remember here, early in this second quarter, Lexi Held picked up her third foul. She is one of the stars of this DePaul team. And they obviously have had a difficult time navigating without her. Here's Van Lith, three seconds left. Haley Van Lith gives it up, and Cochran did not get it off in time. So that bucket will not count, but Louisville outscores DePaul 31 to 13 in the second quarter. They have a 61-37 lead at the half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holiday. And Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need. After the break, it's back to the studio with LaChina Robinson for the WNBA Draft Lottery. Welcome you back to the Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo, socially distanced here at Mohegan Sun. And what a first half from Louisville, 61-37 lead over DePaul and the guard play from Louisville, Rebecca, just so impressive. Yeah, the Louisville guards were absolutely stellar. And 42 of the team's 61 first half points. Dana Evans, of course, is going to lead the charge. They were able to get into the paint. Haley Van Lith as well. She also lit it up from the perimeter. As did Kiana Smith. I mean, she has been the one that's really impressed me because we didn't know what she was going to be able to bring to this Louisville team. This is her first time playing alongside them this season. And just absolutely spectacular. Look at the <laughs> offensive performance from Louisville so far in this game. Yeah, Hotels.com first half stats. 61 points, ties the most in a half in school history. And for Louisville, they do this 
against a DePaul team that actually just set their school record for total points in a game, 128, that they scored in a win against Chicago State, their game prior to this one. We'll see what DePaul has left in the tank. We know they can fill it up in a hurry from three. Did not see that in the first half as they missed their first 14 from downtown. An easy bucket to begin things for Olivia Cochran. Yeah, I really like that Louisville was involving Cochran in pick and roll action. Get her a touch inside. And their guards were so good in that first half. Now getting their bigs involved. Here's Lexi Held, who picked up her third foul early in the second quarter, limited her to just 10 minutes in that first half. Sonia Morris, the cut and the finish. Nice delivery from Diva Kelja. So important for DePaul to be able to score because then they can do this. They can extend their pressure. They gave Louisville some difficulty in the first quarter when they were able to score and get into their full court press. 12 turnovers to ball forced in that first half as Van Lynn buries the three. 19 points now for Haley Van Lith. But credit Dana Evans. She was the one who created the space for Van Lith by getting so deep on her dribble penetration to then kick it out. Dana Evans, one of five AP preseason All-Americans. That pass taken away by Van Lith. Evans streaking to her right. Van Lith will find her for the layup. Yeah, you better return the favor because she just set you up for a three on the last possession. Wow, these two have played so well with one another. His first two and a half games of the season. We were talking to Jeff Walls, and he said the relationship is just so strong between them as well. They really get along. Dana Evans getting deep dribble penetration, getting the touch in the paint. The help side has to come. Van Lith is going to make it when she has that amount of time. And then there, just short of a travel, she gets the ball back to her backcourt mate. Let's see. We're talking to Haley and Dana together earlier today. And we asked Dana, so have you been showing Haley the ropes? And she said, oh, yeah. You know, I, I always show her the way, but this is not a hard transition for Haley. And we've seen that through her first few games, how productive she has been already. And there's a polish to Haley Van Lith. She's used to people watching her play basketball. She's used to a following, and she's used to excelling at high levels. And it helps that she has, you know, the college body. She is a big, strong guard. 19 points of 7 of 10 shooting. Speaking of big and strong, a college body and a freshman, how about Olivia Cochran? Yeah. <laughs> She, she has done a great job early in this season for Louisville. We talked about her in the first half, but that woman, young woman has a bright, bright future. 12 points, five of six shooting, seven rebounds for Cochran. Haley Van Lith and Olivia Cochran both won gold medals as teammates on 2019 FIBA three-on-three three under-18 World Cup team. And now get to play together in Louisville. We were talking to Jeff Walls, too, about coaching Haley Van Lith, and he, and he had an opportunity to coach her with USA Basketball. So this is not his first time this season coaching that young woman. And he, he said something interesting. We said, you know, what stands out most to you about her? And he said, she works as hard as any player I've ever coached. We have to throttle her down and remind her to pace herself. He said, and, and you don't you don't really want to say it too much because you love what she's doing. But that's how dedicated she is. Evans lays it in. DePaul will take a timeout. It's a 32-point Louisville lead with 7.31 to go in the third quarter. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe. Third quarter action, Ryan Ruka, Rebecca Lobo with you. 
Number five, Louisville, 72 40 lead over number 20, DePaul. The Jimmy V Women's Classic. Six point game after one, and then Louisville's guards just went nuts in the second as McKellen just called for the travel, and DePaul turns it over. When you're going against Louisville, you need to know that they are going to go quickly end to end. The activity on the defensive end here. Smith gets her hands on the ball immediately. Eyes up, looking down the floor. Then another pass. Balagoon, eyes up, looking down the floor. Dana Evans finishes. Jeff Walls loves it. Their pace has been terrific so far in this game. Cochran banks it in. She's been really good. The last defensive possession for Louisville, she guarded a couple guards and then ended up finishing inside and helping force a turnover. Cochran has been impactful offensively and defensively. 14 points for the freshman Cochran to go with eight rebounds. She's six of seven from the floor. Evans banks it home. Dana Evans now with 16 points. Hell tried to squeeze it into Church. The Keldra will hoist. She can't hit. The ball one of 16 from three. That was their first attempt of this third quarter. And that is going the other way as the charge is taken by Church. It's a top 20 triple header college basketball Sunday on ESPN. Number 12, Villanova, and number 17, Texas. Tip off the day at noon. Up next, it'll be the Crosstown Shootout as Xavier travels three short miles to Cincinnati. And we wrap up at five as 20th ranked Kentucky takes on Georgia Tech in Atlanta. All three games on ESPN and the ESPN app. When those games are over, you can turn to ESPN too and watch a couple really good women's basketball games on Sunday as well. Last night, big time matchup on ESPN2. NC State, South Carolina with NC State ending a 29 game winning streak from South Carolina. And it was interesting, we came in here for shoot around earlier today and the men's team for NC State had just finished up and their head coach Kevin Keats came over as well as assistant James Johnson, they said, hey, you make sure to go give Wes Moore some love tonight. That was a big win we were all watching last night. You make sure he knows that we we saw, and you make sure to give him some love from us. Yeah, they said yeah, they were good coaches, and then Elisa Kunain got there and made them great coaches. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love that they came right over and wanted to make sure to, to congratulate Wes Moore. A 32-point Louisville lead. There's the pressure applied by DePaul. Evans able to break it with a dribble. That drops in for Nia Green, the redshirt freshman. McDonald's All-American out of Allen, Texas. Getting her first minutes of the game. Oh, man. Sonia Morris has an outstanding hesitation where she can create remarkable amounts of space. Yeah, Sonia Morris with only seven points in this game, but she's a really capable offensive player. We've seen the hesitation. She hasn't been able to hit threes today, but that's certainly part of her game, mid-range as well. Morris just three of 15 from the floor in this game, but came into today's game averaging 21 and a half points on 55% shooting. And Jeff Walls will have a little conversation with the reigning ACC Player of the Year, Dana Evans. Held has her three rejected by Kono. Van Lift catches up to it and finishes on the move. Really nice help defense by Kono. But the second, again, the second Louisville gets the ball on the defensive end, eyes are up. Who's running and how can I get him the basketball? You better be ready to play some defensive transition if you're playing against a Louisville Cardinal this year. Church gets fouled, will shoot two. Timeout on the floor. Great communication defensively. You need a little help, your teammate comes out. The second, Smith has the basketball, leading her teammate the other way. 
search. We want to remind you that during these challenging times, ESPN and the V Foundation's fight against cancer has not stopped. If you are able to, and we know how difficult it is right now, but if you are able to, please support cancer research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes to cancer research. Rebecca and I will be donating $50 each per three made in this game to the V Foundation, which normally for DePaul, that's a very high total. So far, just one three from DePaul in this game. But following up on what our colleagues did last night, Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck, as that won't drop from Bekelja. But you can play along with us. doesn't have to be $50. Any amount, play along. If a three made, it could be a 10 cent donation. Every bit matters. You can do it per Louisville block. That would be a big number. How about per Louisville point in the paint? They have 50 of them now in this game. Ooh. They have 25 fast break points. They have 27 points off turnovers. They've got really good length, both on the interior and on the perimeter, Louisville does. And defensively, that's going to cause problems for other teams. And then, I've talked about it a lot, but the quickness with which they get the basketball and push it the other direction. Dana Evans getting some time on the bench. Her team's lead he is a very comfortable 37. Smith comes up with a steal. Kiana Smith finds Dixon, who lays it in. Elizabeth Dixon has had some really nice stretches in this game. The junior out of Memphis, transfer from Georgia Tech. Smith cups it up and in. Kiana Smith with her first points of the second half after 16 in the first. And Jeff Wall's very happy with the play of his squad. Kiana Smith, those last two possessions, so smooth. The first time she came down, she wasn't going to get sped up, pulled it out so that she could then deliver to Dixon. She knew her big was trailing her. And then the last time down the floor to just take it herself. I mean, this young woman is so impressive. This time, all right, I'll just take it myself and finish with my left hand. Doug Bruno's, hey, man. This has been a bit painful. He's used to being the one who's pushing the pace. And, and today, Louisville has made DePaul, if possible, play even faster than they want to play. Yeah, this is a DePaul team that took Texas A&M down to the wire. A&M winning 93-91. But a game that Sonia Morris fouled out with just under seven minutes left. And you wonder, could that result have been different? A game that gave DePaul some confidence to how they already felt about their squad going into this season. The Louisville has just fired on all cylinders so far tonight. And just look how they're helping one another on the defensive end of the floor. Right there, Kiana Smith was there for help defense. Nice job by Rogers to recover and go up strong. But this Louisville has been really, really active. They want to take away the paint, and their help side defense is going to be there in order to do it. Here, I've got to come over and help. Stay active, get a deflection. But again, credit Rogers for staying strong inside. Rogers, freshman, who was ranked 12th at her position in the country for this year's class. And so far in this game, Rebecca, we have seen Rogers with a really nice handle to go with good size. Yeah, especially when she has a big on her. Uh, she can pull him out to the perimeter and go behind the back through the legs, all of that to try to drive on a player who might be bigger, but also a little bit slower than she is. Smith, nice entry feed. Dixon, the soft finish. That's where she has improved, is with her pace. She did not rush that. She got her balance and finished with the left hand. Deja Church can't finish. Dixon couldn't hold it, but Kono has it for Louisville. Kono has had some impactful plays in this game off the bench for Louisville. Smith cutting through, couldn't push it in. 
Gets it back, though, and now Wisely will peel back. Smith's three. No. The put back off the mark from Green, but then Dixon gets another to drop. Yeah, Liz Dixon has been really, really good. She, again, a good pace. She's finishing inside. She understands that she's the biggest player on the floor, and she can take her time. Hell's trying to fire it underneath, and a foul against Louisville, and then a technical as well, called, I believe, against Haley Van Lith. I missed it. What'd she do? I think she just wasn't pleased with the call. She vocalized it? She did. Also, he's trying to fuck with the cuffs. See, that's where you'd want to have a mask on, because then they can't read your lips. <laughs> and room. Because of the technical, it's not just her third personal with the initial foul, but becomes Haley's fourth foul as well, with technicals counting as personals. So Haley Van Litt now with four fouls to go with their 21 points. As Bekelja misses the second. I don't know if people at home can hear the crowd noise that's being pumped in here. But it's really weird. Weird crowd noise. Doesn't sound like basketball crowd. No? No. Whoops. Does it sound like a rodeo crowd to you? Maybe, if I'd ever been to a rodeo. <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like. It's just a little bit, a little bit weird. I like it. Do you? Yeah, I do. You want the DJ to play something for you? I do. We got so used to that in the WNBA season where the DJs yeah. can play music. The NCAA does not allow music to be played during live action, so they can't play music, but they can play weird crowd noise. Do you think an exception should be made in a season without crowds? I think, it, yes, I do. Let's work on that. All right. I mean, the DJ's here. You might as well let him play some music. I'm new to this game. I think you're going to have more clout than me, partner. <laughs> Bekelja can't finish. Evans back in. Leading the way for Louisville. Got into the lane and flips it in. Dana Evans now with 18 points. How about Dana Evans? You know, at her size, her ability to not only get in the paint, but to finish in there. We were talking to her today about WNBA players and if there's anybody she kind of watched and modeled her game after. And it was interesting because she brought up Crystal Dangerfield, the reigning rookie of the year in the WNBA. And she said, you know, she's small and I'm small. And, and she showed, you know, how effective you can be um, in the at the next level, even at a, at a smaller size. Yeah. Dangerfield 5'5", five, five. Evans 5'6". Five, I mean, look at that progression for Dana Evans. From five points per game as a freshman to the ACC Player of the Year as a junior, she's the first player in conference history to win six Player of the Year and then Player of the Year. It's, it's a remarkable leap, and to only average five points a game as a freshman. Again, she's getting inside. Granted, it's not against the biggest team in DePaul, but she has been able to do this in her career, is get touches in the paint and find a way to get her shot up and in. Morris can it to three. DePaul now one of 18 from downtown. A 94 to 50 lead for Louisville. Evans will kick it out. Smith's three. You bet. Louisville has a lot of really nice pieces and a lot of really good players. But Kiana Smith has been the best player on the floor here so far tonight. 21 points for Kiana Smith to go with five rebounds, five assists. But one of the things that Jeff Walls pointed out to us was Smith ran the point for Cap. And she's got a great handle. She's got length. She can hit the three-point shot. We saw her create her own shot in the first half. She's heady. She makes smart plays. What a talent. A career high, 21 points for Kiana Smith. It's funny because, you know, we, we saw the, the tweets earlier that Jeff Walls was sending out trying to find opponents. Like, we'll play anyone. You can't be picky this year. Like, you just got to play. 
Now I know why. <laughs> you have this team. You want to play as many games as possible. You're not afraid of anybody. You'll go anywhere with this squad. And maybe you know why it took a little longer to find an opponent, too? Yeah, right. yeah other people know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this balance for Louisville. And Lift and Cochran, both freshmen, as Evans got it taken away, but a travel was called. Not right. Not only the points, look at the efficiency. Yeah, incredible efficiency. And one thing we know about Doug Bruno, though, he will take difficult non conference matchups. He likes doing that with his schedule early in the season. And so jumped at the chance here to face this Louisville team and see what is clearly an outstanding opponent. Evans weaving, curling, and the layup goes for Cochran. What a setup from Dana Evans. Exactly. Yeah, we saw her a couple possessions find her own shot after the, touching the paint, and they are a great delivery. Rodgers can it to three. Rebound Smith. Louisville still pushing. Evans with the four on two. Cochran waits and finishes. Olivia Cochran now with 18 points of her own. She's eight of nine from the floor. Twelve seconds left in the third, and Smith nearly came up with another steal. 17 turnovers thus far from DePaul. Louisville has 17 turnovers themselves. That corner jump will go from three. Deep Akelja has each of DePaul's two threes in this game. Evans can't hit at the buzzer. That'll do it for the third quarter. Louisville 101 54 lead. The freshman getting involved in this one for the Cardinals. You know, we've talked enough about the Littles, the backcourt for Louisville. How about <laughs> talking about their freshman big, Olivia Cochran, finishing inside, getting it done? Nice job. Twenty-seven percent for DePaul, man. Oof. Oh. I feel bad for him. Two yeah. for twenty from three. Yeah. <sighs> Frank Tar Heels at the Carver Hawkeye Arena to tip with number three Iowa. Then we're off to Cameron indoors. The number six Blue Devils host number five Illinois. Should be two great Sonic blockbusters. At the end of the quarter. Sonia Morris, one of the stars of DePaul, picked up a technical foul. It was her fifth personal, and so Morris has fouled out of this game. Okay, so she probably shouldn't have been yapping at Dana Evans, but whatever she was saying, it, it was the end of the quarter. Let it go. Let her just a little bit as she walks back to the bench. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it didn't get a rise out of Dana yeah, Evans. Yeah. She didn't even barely look at her. Just let her walk by. Yeah. Sonia Morris, an incredibly talented player for DePaul. Second team all Big East a season ago. Preseason all Big East this year. Former Miss Missouri basketball. And a tough game for her tonight. Three for 17 from the floor. Now fouling out, but, you know, she will bounce back. Start of the fourth quarter, a 102-54 Louisville lead. A little hot potato there, but it ends with a bucket for Romani Parker, the redshirt freshman. Jeff Hall is getting a chance with this lead to give a lot of his players some extra PT. Deja Church, when nothing has been easy all game for DePaul. No, it hasn't. And, and that's the thing with DePaul, is if they, if they can get some shots, ooh, they can get some shots to drop early. It's kind of like, watch out, their three is on, but that wasn't the case today. That is always the style for Doug Bruno's squad. Now, Doug's longtime athletic director was a former player of his, Gene Lenti Ponsetto. Gene retiring this past summer, had been the athletic director since 2002, 
battling breast cancer for a third time. And we send our best wishes to Jean, who is so beloved by the DePaul community. And a reminder that this is the Jimmy V Women's Classic. And if you are in position to donate, we so appreciate that you do. No matter what the amount is, it makes a difference. All you need to do is go to v.org slash donate. 100% of what you donate goes directly to cancer research program. The foundation's endowment covers all the administration expenses. So everything you donate, it goes directly to cancer research. And Brian, when you get a cancer diagnosis or if you have a family member who gets a cancer diagnosis, the one thing you're looking for more than anything is hope. And the V Foundation can provide some of that hope. We had Holly Rowe on earlier talking about experimental drugs and experimental treatments and all of the things that they are doing to help people who have been diagnosed with this terrible disease and giving them hope, giving their family members hope. And every dollar that you spend is helping to give hope to those families. And there's Brady Walls again, who is a cancer survivor. He was diagnosed with leukemia when he was in eighth grade, now a sophomore in college and cancer-free as a manager for his uncle Jeff on the Louisville basketball squad. 106-61 Louisville lead. Eight minutes, 25 seconds to go in this fourth quarter. And another bucket for Ramani Parker. She is 6'4", and she is really smooth and light on her feet, moves really well on the floor. Well, Rebecca, in addition to the incredible guard play we've seen from Louisville tonight, as well as the prowess of the freshman big Olivia Cochran, we've seen great depth from this yep. Louisville team in this game as well. Elizabeth Balagoon had a relatively quiet game for her here today, but Jeff Walls was telling us how she can be an X factor for his team, another long wing player who can shoot from three, can drive it into the basket. There's a lot of really talented offensive weapons. I think since Louisville scored over 100, I think all fans in attendance get a free burger. <laughs> Well, everybody here will be delighted to know, Rebecca. <laughs> no, I do have to say, we've only been here for a brief stay, but the hospitality here at Vegan Sun has been first class and incredible as they have pulled off Bubbleville for two weeks to tip off this college basketball season. It only took Jay Billis one day to get to the cookies in the mini bar. Yeah. So <laughs> that jumper goes down That's Alana Smith. for Alana Smith. Had some foul trouble early starting this game for Louisville. But you get the feeling that Kiana Smith might be working her way into the starting lineup <laughs> after her performance tonight. Kiana Smith's first game with Louisville. Nia Green retrieves the rejection. And the finish inside won't go initially for Russell. As Louisville will give it back to DePaul. The foul called against oh, Marissa oh, Russell. Sorry, Marissa Russell. Many players putting on their masks as soon as they get to the bench. And apparently Coach Walls sharing some humor with Olivia Cochran. <laughs> Laughing it up on the sideline. They've had pretty good mask etiquette, too. Oh, excellent. Covering the nose and the mouth the way it's supposed to be worn. Right. It is interesting, too, Ryan, talking to the coaches about how COVID has impacted their teams in ways you wouldn't necessarily expect. Absolutely. Jeff Wall said when they have meals together, they sit three at a table. You're always with the same three. You probably aren't going to have your two best players sitting at the same table because if you get a positive test, then you have to worry about contact tracing. There's a lot of thought now that goes into how you group your different players together. Well, you think about it. I mean, it makes a ton of sense, right? I mean, you don't want Dane Evans, Haley Van Lith, and Kiana Smith. Kiana Smith all at the same table because one of them gets a positive test and yeah. now all of them are unavailable to you. 
And if you're on the Louisville team, you don't, you're like, wait a minute, why am I sitting at the table with Dana Evans? <laughs> what does <what laughs> Coach think of me? <laughs> don't read into that. <laughs> Dana Evans with another strong performance in this game. 20 points, 9 of 17 shooting, also had 7 assists. Had averaged 6.5 through the first two games of this season. Now this is something to watch for, Rebecca. Louisville's record for points in a game is 115. They did it against Murray State back in 2017. They have over six minutes to top that mark, and they are three points away from matching it. Feels like a fairly safe bet at this point. You think so? I, I, I think so. For total threes in this game, partner, nine, nine threes thus far. Not bad. No, so that's... $450 donated by each of us to the Bee Foundation. And we encourage you to play along with whatever your own game is and whatever amount you want to donate. Maybe it's 50 cents for every block or a dollar for every point in the paint. Whatever you can contribute goes directly towards cancer research. Just go to v.org slash donate. Each of these teams digging a little deeper into their rosters with this contest no longer in doubt in this fourth quarter. And that is going to be a travel against Ramon Parker. You see Lexi Held as well as Sonia Morris on the bench, excellent mask etiquette. Right back to the mask on, which we mentioned earlier, but in case you're just joining us, DePaul played their first two games while wearing masks. And Doug Bruno was going to continue to if that's what the medical personnel at DePaul recommended. Said, we're gonna follow the science, whatever that means. And after further cons consultation, at least at this moment in time, felt like it was okay to take masks off during game competition. Especially here in Bubbleville, mm -hmm. where teams have tested tested before they got here, and most teams are testing multiple times a week, but they also tested yesterday to make sure everyone was negative before stepping out on the floor. Nadej Jean can't finish. Cochran back in, bullying her way into the lane, and gets the foul, will shoot two. A 112-65 lead for Louisville, under five minutes to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Corona Extra. Find the fine life, live la vida mas fina. And in part by Paycom, comprehensive HR and payroll technology, and Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities with the Air Force Reserve. Forty here on ESPN. We will wrap our game over on ESPN Two. So, just before kickoff, you will be sent to the football game here on ESPN. And if you want to hang with Louisville DePaul, you're just going to have to mosey on over to ESPN Two to finish out the evening with us. That's a DVR killer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa Russell. Yeah, how are you going to know who won? <laughs> I think that part of it's okay. Yeah, DePaul has struggled on the offensive end of the floor uh, in this game, and a lot, a lot of the reason is because Louisville's defense has been so good. But don't sleep on this DePaul team, especially Jory Allen gets eligible and they get some size. Uh, they are a potent offensive team. And they can get out in transition. They can hit threes. They haven't been able to do that in this matchup. But today's game has not been a great reflection of the type of team that DePaul is or can be this season. 
looking to defend their Big East title. Of course, UConn back in the Big East, so it is a particularly difficult challenge for DePaul this season. 17 straight trips to the NCAA tournament. We're lined up to have a top 16 seed a season ago. And that's always a goal for DePaul as well, so they can post those two home games, although who knows exactly what the structure will be with this year's fluidity in the NCAA tournament. But yeah, tonight, not necessarily a reflection of how the rest of this season will go for DePaul. You mentioned Jury Allen. She would be the starting big with the other four guards that Doug Bruno likes to play. Tonight, DePaul started five guards. Jury Allen was Miss Basketball in Indiana in 2019. I mean, they are really high on what she can bring to DePaul. In about 30 seconds, if you want to hang with us, you're going to have to switch on over to ESPN2 as we will be heading to App State in Louisiana just before the kickoff of their game on the gridiron. And there, with that bucket, Louisville sets a franchise record 116 points, topping their mark of 115 against Murray State back in 2017. Kono comes up with it for Louisville. If you want to hang with us for the end of Louisville and DePaul, we're going to have you switch things over to ESPN2 right at the end of this possession. So if you want to hang with us, switch on over to ESPN2 as we are going to be sending things out to ESPN for App State and Louisiana. We welcome all of you on ESPN2 for the closing minutes of this game between Louisville and DePaul. Ryan Rucco, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo with you. Number five, Louisville has looked like a national title contender tonight. A 116-65 lead over a very good DePaul team. And it has left the star guards of Louisville on their bench, smiling and making sure their noses are covered with their masks when the camera's on them. But for anyone who's watched this Louisville performance tonight, as they've set a school record with 116 points, and you're wondering, well, when can I watch them again on ESPN? Well, several chances for you throughout the remainder of this season. In fact, they'll be on ACC Network, Sunday, December 13th, Thursday, December 17th, and on New Year's Eve against Duke. That an 8 o'clock tip. Also will be on ESPN2 against NC State on January 17th. Find them February 1st, February 7th, and February 14th, all on the ESPN family of networks. So Louisville's ranked fifth in the country. Number one is South Carolina. They lost yesterday to NC State. Number two is Stanford. They've been only been able to play one game so far. Three UConn, four Baylor. UConn hasn't played yet, of course, because they've had to be in quarantine after someone in their tier one tested positive. So I've seen all those teams t play on tape. This is the most impressive performance. Granted, it's only three games into the season. Louisville here today is the most impressive performance I've seen from any of those top five teams. Barely, barely squeaked by South Florida earlier this week. Stanford has looked good. They've only played the one game, but wow, this is this has been an impressive evening here for Jeff Wall's team. And Jeff Walls was so appreciative of Doug Bruno and the DePaul staff and the hoops they jumped through to make this game happen after UConn had to pull out with a positive test in tier one of their program. And we talked about it before, Rebecca, for Doug Bruno's team, he likes being in these kind of games early in the season. 
getting a feel for where the weaknesses of the squad might be, where they need to improve, and how they stack up with the best in the country. And he wants to grow the game. And he wants his team to be a part of that. And they were supposed to play uh, Villanova today. So they had to talk to the Big East and talk to Villanova to make sure it was okay to move that game. They had to talk to Kent State because they had a guaranteed game with them. But Bruno was going to do anything he could so that he could come out here and, and face a top five team. Just the third three of the game for DePaul, who was leading the nation with 14 made threes per game through their first two contests. Good. Make that fourth three. So four of 26 from three now for DePaul. Time now for our Air Force Reserve player of the game, oh, Kiana so Smith, in her first game as a Louisville Cardinal. 21 points on nine of 14 shooting, six rebounds and six assists for Kiana Smith. Uh, she's been she's been so smooth. Uh, she made good decisions when she was out on the floor. She showed her, her entire skill set on the offensive end, can hit from deep, has a pull-up game, finds teammates. She was great out in transition. She was long, is a problem on the defensive end of the floor. I'm really looking forward to watching her more this season. Hundred and sixteen points for Louisville, a school record. One oh four to go here in this fourth quarter. And Doug Bruno's team gets ready to take on Xavier in just two days at home as they begin conference play. One thing that we heard from coaches and players alike, they were just excited to get a game. In this season of uncertainty, when you are just praying you don't hear about a positive test the morning of a the game, they were thrilled to be in position to come out and compete and to do so on against again tonight. Completely different perspective after what everybody has been through over the last seven months. You know, for players who were in college last March, ready to, to make it to the NCAA tournament, and like that, it was gone. And so in terms of their appreciation for basketball, it is at a different level now. I want to remind you, if you are able to, to head to v.org slash donate and donate whatever you can in the fight against cancer, all of your money goes directly to cancer research. An impressive performance tonight from Louisville. A 116-75 victory over DePaul. 116 points. A school record for the Louisville Cardinals. Once again, the final score, Louisville 116, DePaul 75 for Rebecca Lobo and our entire crew. I'm Ryan Rucco. Jalen and Jacoby is coming up next.